On this podcast, love is welcome. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The choice are going to mandate you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. Handball, Brian. Boo, sit down. Black Adam. I saw that. Baldy Wood is going to uh, hit it. Um, I know nothing about it. I have thoughts. It. I saw Me it. Me neither. <laughs> yes, I saw it. And I know nothing about it. Is that a real, like, is that a storied character from the comic I verse? Don't, I don't know anything. He yells Shazam, and I'm like, oh. is, don't they have a Shazam? And then that's like, no, that's we got a lot what to they talk do. About. Okay. And then, uh, very dusty movie. Oh, a lot of dust. Exceptionally Sorry dusty. to hear it. Exceptionally dusty. I mean, the thing took place in what would be some place that looked like Egypt or something. Lots of stonework, lots of dirt streets. I did not see that coming. And then one of the characters was basically the dust kicker. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know if that's the their actual devil? name, but she was a whirling dervish. So I used to have this thing. Always, she has dominion over wind. Not a great setting for that. Not, not if you don't like dust. You know, my least favorite move that people would do when I work construction and beyond is you'd be in some old dank, dusty warehouse where you're like busting out walls and cinder block and making a mess. And at some point, someone would like bring a sheet of plywood over. And oh. oftentimes the guys would set the sheet of plywood on its heel and but, then they just let it yep. go. And when it flopped on the floor, it just go poof. And I'd be like, thanks, Dick. Now we're all going to be breathing this for the next two hours. But anyway, we'll we'll get into that. Uh, I had a uh, flashback, a, a sad flashback to my uh, old old room in my old house because we were talking about uh, you can just say flashback. the you old house say that. being torn down right? and Gina's neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> this is my old room. Now, I, I've never done the math. You know, people would say, like, what, what kind of bed did you sleep on? I don't and, know. What kind of bed fits in a bomb shelter? Uh, yes, I would say. It's a panic room. I, yeah. I would say, um, well, I, it wasn't a cot per se, but it was like an army bed or whatever the smallest bed you could get would be in the, the room because the bed, <laughs> first, I never thought about this. The bed was obviously against one wall to the side, and then the head was against another wall because it was pushed in the oh, corner boy. at the right. It's as what, we they, look it's what at this. they wheel in in like Cedar Sinai when your wife gives birth. <laughs> That's what you get to sleep in if you choose to sleep yeah, in the night. Yeah, our <laughs> mine costs at eleven dollars. I don't know what the cedar bed costs. Is that door painted shut? No, there was a emotionally. There, yeah, it, it was so. First <laughs> off, the math that I never did on the room I grew up in. <laughs> <clears throat> you're looking at a picture. You can go to amcrow.com and look at this picture. But the picture you're looking at is from the end of the room looking back toward the opening of the room, which is to the left. You can't see the door. And the bed is to the right of the back door. It had a, had a weird metal back door. Now, remember, the meter reader would come into the room <laughs> hey, once a month. I'd let this dude in. He should have called Child Protective Services. Yeah. He'd walk in, he'd open the closet door, which is to the left. There was a bank of closet doors. Inside of that was a washing machine, a clothes washing, no dryer, just a washing machine because mm. we had a you know clothesline in the back. And above it was the meter because this used to be the outside of the house. And then it got enclosed as a porch and as an enclosed Real porch. Upgrade. And then I moved in. My bed... Now, the width of the room, the entire width of the room the from single the single bulb at the top. <laughs> yes. The, the, this is from Saw. The, this is from Six, the prequel to Seven. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the room, the width of the room was from the front of the closets on the left to the wall that you can't see on the right. But there is now, this is a more modern picture from the 80s. There is a dryer that is pushed against the wall. Ooh la la. So we have scale. We have a dime for scale here. A washing, a dryer of that era from the 80s would be about 27 inches deep. So you take 27 inches and you add it to the 22 inches in front of it where the closets are. And that would be the entire width 
of the room. Whatever 27 and 22 and a half are, that was the width of the... Now, my bed was on the right side of the door we're looking at against the wall. So the dryer sticks out as far as the door, and my bed did not come out past the door. So my bed was a maximum of like 27 inches wide and it was in that corner of that service porch that's the uh that's the, the flashback these I have. days anyone dropping off doordash or <laughs> anything they would absolutely call the police yeah. yes that's where i grew up so now i overcompensated and i want to put a lamborghini inside my den that's go. where uh, that's where all the overcompensation right. comes from speaking of just uh weird dreams i was uh I had a dream. I don't remember all of them, but I, I remember this one pretty pretty vividly. You're not known for that. No, but I this one I this one I remember. First, uh, uh, so I had the Malibu Soho house in my head because uh, Brian regaled me with stories of going there last Saturday for That's brunch. Right. That's right. I'm a little disturbed that Brian is a member of the Soho house. Yeah, it's I would sort like of it. sort of like. When you back in the day, when you shop for stereo equipment, mm-hmm. if you were well to do and you had a nice home, and then the guy with the name tag on mm-hmm. at Circuit City would go, I got one of these babies in my apartment. <laughs> You'd go, Well, then I don't want yeah, it. Yeah, then what else do you have? Really you know, what else tarnishes, do you have? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's the way I feel about Brian. But would you it, like things to snap into place? Mm, yes. Christy's the member. Yeah, yeah obviously I know not that. But, but, that's but that's so very you sorry. still attend. Everybody knows you that. still attend. <laughs> The point is, is he told me that they're there. So I had this dream. I was in Soho House, and I had two things happen in this dream that were weird. Now, we talked about my, I told you my mundane dreams. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. there was a guy, I was in some sort of back area, some back room, and the by the ocean, and the door I know that had, had like a flap. Shut up, right? Had like a spring-loaded hinge on it, and the guy said, uh, could you chalk that door open for me? And I said, yeah, yeah. And he handed me like a um, furniture pad or something. And he said, you know, just kind of fold it up and wedge it, open the door and kind of wedge it onto the floor. And I I did it. And the door just kind of kept slowly Mm. closing. And the guy was kind of looking at me. And I was like, I got this. I got this. And I would fold up the furniture pad again and open the door and try to wedge it in there. And it would slowly make its way back. And then... I was sort of embarrassed, but also determined. I was like, I'll do this. And I, it wasn't my job. Oh, he just kind of right. asked. He didn't want to come from behind the counter. And he kept asking me. And I kept trying to fold up this blanket furniture pad and stuff it. And the door would just keep slowly closing. And to exacerbate things, a heavy set guy like sort of came down the stairs and was going to the bathroom, which was another door. And as my door was slowly closing his door like banged into my door and i was like i'm sorry i'm trying to uh, wedge this thing shut and he was like yeah it's that's no problem just hold it and i'll use this and that was basically the dream just given a simple task not being able to complete it and being that's a little frustrated somewhat embarrassed if it's in frustration by it and uh then that merged into Somehow, I'm over there waving at you. <laughs> an attractive, uh, cheers, an attractive uh, black woman, young though, like like 15 or something, girl, and she was sitting. <laughs> yeah, she was sitting somewhere, and and I said to her, um, "Oh, I'm thinking about walking down to the some other building down PCH or some restaurant or something." And I said, uh, "She said she was like looking it up on her phone," and I said. Uh, how far away is it? And she said, it's at 5107 PCH. And I said, but how far away is it? And she kept saying 5107, which I, I have these conversations all the time with people in my life. It and, means nothing out of context. And she, right. and she was, and I was like, how, how far is it? Can I walk there? And she goes, it's at 5107. I go, how far away? And she goes, I'm telling you. Oh, and then I woke up. Oh, so that that's basically that what I do at night. Makes sense. So apparently you are going to Hole Mole, the Mexican restaurant. That makes sense. Uh-huh. That makes there. a lot of sense. Just in case. I don't do battle with a lot of not a lot of sword play <laughs> and not a lot of saving of damsels, no. you know, mm-hmm. not not a lot of volcanoes going mm-hmm. off. It's just a lot of could you chalk that door <laughs> and I can't get it. But I but 
the through line is I can't get it done. Yeah. I can't get it done. Is this an older person's thing? I'm trying, now that you mention it, I'm thinking to myself, when's the last time I had a really good dream? Mm. All the dreams are neutral or bad. Yeah. I want out of them. My, I, everyone has a dream that their teeth are falling out, and I still don't yes. totally understand that. But the, what, my reoccurring dream is always I'm driving my car, everything's fine. Uh, you know, couldn't be better. But then I realize, oh my God, I'm in the back seat. How am I driving this car? And then I start freaking out trying to get to the front seat and then I try to pump the brakes and the car crashes. I yeah, brakes not working is a recurring That's a big theme one. Yes. And once in a while, sailing off of a bridge or something in the car Ooh, or something, I'll do that on occasion. But this was arguing with a young woman of color about street addresses <laughs> and trying to chalk a door with a blanket. Wow. Um, I also, when I was thinking about my old room, you know, I used to be a bedwetter as, uh, as everyone knows. You and Sarah Silverman. And, uh, oh yeah, well, now we're looking at an outside picture of the room. You can see the entire width of the room. Oh, oh Jesus. God. So. That's, that's not even a drive No. Did you ever see room? The Jacob like, Trey yeah, over the kids. This is the... where pedophiles keep kids. <laughs> yeah. If you look to the left of the outside door and then to the wall, that's 30 inches. That's where the bed was. So wherever my bed was, it had to push against. I never even thought about sleeping against a wall. My kids don't sleep against a wall. How if is you there? Ever go back? You stay in an Airbnb or something. The bed's against a wall. Well, it has to it's, be. it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. There's so. another 40 percent of real estate that that room could have been livable. Could Why was it cut off there? I don't. They're very minimalistic. No, very minimalistic. Don't blame the victim. People. All right, so we'll put those pictures up. That's um, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, it was, it was literally a porch. Uh, but I was thinking about uh, bedwetting, and then I realized one of the movies of the week that I never really talk about from 1980, which was the story of Michael Landon. The story of Michael like Landon. His Michael Landon. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, highway to Heaven sure. and yeah. um, A Little uh, house, house on the, on the prairie. prairie. Did he die in the 80s? He may or have made it, made it to the early 90s, okay. maybe. Good looking, Jen. Maybe. Good looking, had cancer, sort of famously went on Carson, I think, at the end and said, like, I'm going to beat this thing or mm. something and died. He died in 91. Shortly oh, thereafter. There well, there you go. Um, there's like a 10 second trailer, but it's, it's pretty damn funny. It, so Michael Landon was a bedwetter. Oh. Yeah. So we're, you know, rarefied air, <laughs> all the greats. And there was Sarah Silverman was a bedwetter. So, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty Good elite company. fraternity there. Um, they, the story was Michael Landon, who was, uh, I guess a track athlete. Mm -hmm. in you know high school maybe college or whatever he got his track chops because he was a bedwetter and he had a mean mom and his mom would hang the wet sheet oh, off the balcony I've of his bedroom I've heard this. and the kids would come home after school walk home past his house and make fun of the pea stained sheet that was hanging out the window now my mom couldn't pull that one off because I lived in a shack in the back of the house. What would so it have hung from? There yeah. was no height. Yeah. yeah. Right. But uh, kind of, thankfully, she didn't do that. But she, his mom would hang it, and then he had to sprint. Soon so to as, beat the kids. Soon as, very run, forest run. As soon as the bell rang, he had to break into Fuck a sprint to get to the house to, get to pull the, the sheet. sheet off before the other kids, but was oh. able to get his track legs from that. Wow. I'll play the trailer. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty, it's 1980, but if it's got, feels like 70. The loneliest runner, his mother <laughs> flaunted his shame to the world, but his attempt to protect a secret drove him to victory. Brian Keith, Lance Kerwin, and Michael Landon star Saturday. <laughs> Wait, that's the Michael Landon story they're choosing to tell? <laughs> his secret shame. Guess flaunted so. shame. Yeah. Wow. His oh, so flaunted secret. shame. So I'm confused. This is true, and then he's. This is the old. This is the only part of his life they're trying to tell. 
I watched this it. Is Michael Landon celebrated it's actor. The linchpin to all the rest. As a okay. bedwetter was appointment viewing sure. for a young ace <laughs> man to sit down, and I had my Feel fist seen. in the air the whole time. That's wow. right. Wow. That's right. I had a 40 ounce with urine in it. I dumped a little out <laughs> when Landon died. I understand. You know what I mean? If you'd have to. Um, it was the his story of his early life. Wow. And the uh, then he runner. starred in it as an as an adult version of him. Wow. And uh, Lance Kerwin from James at 15, which was a, like oh, a hit series. Big in our house. My, really? Yeah, my dad used to always make fun of us for watching and, James. Never heard and like Satan's Lot. Like he was a, oh. Lance Kerwin was a childhood actor. Like he was a hot actor in 1982. Yes, that's you know? him. Redheaded kid. I don't know, blonde. Like strawberry blonde uh, Yeah, stra- Yeah, he was a kind of a Tiger Beat guy yeah. in a popular show, was in a couple of movies and just, I was just say, went away. Didn't stand wow. the test of time. I'd never heard of the guy. It was on in reruns in Kansas City. Damn. I don't know if Lance Kerwin must have ended up producing or directing or something. Stepping away from the limelight. He was a childhood big time actor that just, just completely went away, but we'll take a, a dive into that. All right, shall we? Uh, keep- uh, sorry, we have to talk about it now. Okay. I just skimmed really quickly. Oh, dude, um, I just go right to personal life. Uh, in a July 2010 article, it was stated that Kerwin was then working as a pastor at Cavalry Chapel in Kappa or Kappa, Hawaii, and a U turn and a U turn for Christ Pro- program leader. I don't know what that mm-hmm. means. In that same article, Kerwin and his wife Yvonne pled guilty to falsifying documents to obtain state medical assistance in Hawaii. Kerwin was sentenced to five years probation and 300 hours community service. He publicly apologized. That is the whole that is the so whole just, paragraph. That's what I'm just like Ron Howard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He went right. from the trajectory. In front of the camera yeah. to slid behind Producing. the camera. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> wow. That's all we got. Jesus Christ. I wish somebody would have tapped me on the shoulder when I was watching a young Kerwin uh-huh. out there mm-hmm. conquering the world <laughs> and said, you know, one day he's going to be in the Hooskow <laughs> in Hawaii and you're going to be doing a podcast. Right. <laughs> a what? Uh-huh. Your mind would have melted. <laughs> yes. All right. Shall we do a little uh, Baldywood? We'll tell you if a movie's good. Brian will review the flicks that he's seen up on the big screen or in his Netflix queue. Before you spend bucks, remember his taste sucks. He loved that train wreck piece of shit. Transformers 2. Hooray for Bollywood. So a little preamble, a little peek behind the curtain of what goes on here. After the show yesterday, I'm heading out the door and Chris said, hey, you want to do Bollywood on Black Adam? And I said, no, I do not. It is a middling movie at best. And Adam Carolla is not going to give a shit about it. Like, these things go well when Adam's interested in the movie or if there's something crazy about it or it's a big story or whatever. He goes, oh, no, Adam saw it. I'm like, what? In what? So that's my first question. What led you to see Black Adam? Just local. There's two there's two components to wanting to go see a movie. There's, I want to go see that movie. And then there's, I want to go see a A movie. movie. I want to sit somewhere and not deal with anything. And that's why. Or I want some air conditioning for an hour and a half. I mean, see that coming. Okay. Black Adam is a 2022 film directed by Jean Colette Serra. Uh, He directed Jungle Cruise. This stars Dwayne Johnson, Aldous Hodge, Noah Caneneo, Sarah Shahi, uh, I'm messing up these names because I don't know these people. You could very just say well. it stars The Rock. Stars The Rock. Uh, Viola Davis and Pierce Brosnan mm. are also in this movie. Uh, 39% on Ooh. Rotten Tomatoes amongst the critics, 90% on Rotten Tomatoes amongst the people. Really? Wow. We're going to like Daily Wire territory here where like yeah. critics hate it, but the people are like, give me more. I'm surprised by the people because compared. To other movies of this ilk, this one, you know, of the last eight 
that were made. This one's seven. So I'm surprised that the people were that enthusiastic about it. But yeah, okay. and, and I would expect it to be closer both ways because I don't see how the average person goes into this and comes away saying, wow, that yeah, was maybe. amazing. But the critics are nerds, right? right? They love the comic book heroes and the superheroes and the everything. And this feels like it should be sort of more towards each other. But here we are, 39 and 90. Okay. <clears throat> so what's it about? So Black Adam is a, is a oh, he's a guy who's he's a guy. I think he was a guy. He was a guy who was a, put to sleep, imprisoned something five thousand years ago for uh, attempting to kill or or defying the king, uh, and now he has been resurrected, um, possibly as a weapon, and he has Superman like like powers. He's mm-hmm. essentially evil Superman. Would you say that's correct? Yeah. Evil. Or, or at least he's frozen caveman attorney mm. Superman. Mm. He doesn't really know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. There's a whole thing, Gina, mm-hmm. uh, Brian, I don't know if you're on board with this. Mm-hmm. I've complained about it many times. Things were fairly well defined as in Batman did shit, but that was he had his bat belt, right. his Batmobile. Otherwise, he's just a man. And. Yeah, there was kind of just a man, but I can do this. Right. Then it got a little the uh, the fuzzy when Spider Man kicked in, but he's a guy, but he could defy gravity, mm-hmm. but he wasn't bulletproof, right. or whatever. And now there's this new thing where I'm not sure what their powers are, uh-huh. other than being able to kick ass, do anything, a apparently. lot. And kind of do anything, and then they're fighting other people that are doing anything, but they're throwing fists all the time. And I, it's weird that I used to say this about like in, in the 80s, they had a lot of you know barbarians in space, like he's in a space shuttle, but he's got a loincloth and a slingshot. I'm like, well, what kind of which is it? Like, you're having a fist fight. But you have all the powers in the world, and then once in a while you can throw your hand at somebody, and like a lightning yeah, bolt sure. will come sailing out. You're effectively out. supernatural. Why does this come down to punching each other? Huh? Yeah, it's a lot of punch. A lot of old school, yeah. um, real, it, it, like like bar, you know, in a bar western brawl. bar brawl type fighting with people. Who can, you know, take a dam and lift it over right. their head if they, they grunt enough. Okay, Sorry. so there's a, we, this should be obvious to everyone listening. I don't think anyone in this room is an expert on the history of Black Adam or DC Comics or comics in general. You're so correct. I'm coming at this from a pure movie watcher standpoint. Like, great, tell me about this character. I didn't know a lot about Iron Man when I went into the Iron Man and I fell in love with it. It was a fantastic movie. This is a very bad movie, and there are many problems. Problem number one, like Adam alluded to, it is wall-to-wall fighting. Yeah. It's just, if you look at the clips, I wrote this down because I was looking for um, Black Adam clips, uh, movie clips for, for the show, for the segment, and it's, uh, the, the first like five that come up are Black Adam versus the Justice Society, Black Adam versus the military, Black Adam ver- all clips from this movie, mm. Black Adam versus Hawkman, Black Adam versus Adam Smasher, Black Adam Jesus. versus Doctor, it's all Black Adam versus, it's just ass kicking from start to finish. Yeah, too much action. Okay. If that's possible, but it is mind numbing. But for the audience, they obviously fucking loved it. it. It's weird these fights where we're not sure, like Hawkman, Hawkeye, he flies, Hawkeye. but his wings never break. I think but they're part of him. They're part of him. Because he threatened to snap them off at one point, and then he started to pull them, and it was causing him severe pain. And then he'll get, people get like thrown through a cinder block wall, and then they go, Ugh. Yeah. Like they got dinged There's up so and not sales. too yeah. bad, and then they go back into fighting, and then at some point, if they concentrate real hard, they'll throw a laser beam out of their hands. I, it's okay, I'll unclear. Get, I'll get to that. The, 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 what I thought the main problem was with the movie, besides just the relentless fighting, was um, the tone is all over the place and it's really mismanaged. There's times where the movie is straight up silly. Like it's a silly movie and there's times where it's trying to be awesome. It's trying to be like the coolest thing a 13-year-old boy has ever seen. Do you mean silly in a like Deadpool kind of winking way? I'm glad you asked. I have a clip uh, for the film. Uh, this is the only clip I can find where there's not actual dialogue. combat happening. Yeah, there's dialogue. Uh, you can see a, a building has been blown apart as though a bomb has hit it. And uh, two of the heroes, de facto heroes, have come to confront Black Adam and get him to basically turn himself in. Dust. More dust. 
look alive to me. Because I saved them. Well, that's why I waited until you were there. I got the information I needed. No one died. I did it your way. He does have a point. I know it got lost in all the confusion, but we still have some issues to settle here. There are only heroes, and there are villains. You think yourself a hero, but you would let these criminals go free. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. I think that was supposed to get a big laugh, and mm-hmm. it was like, I don't know what I'm watching right now. That He is straight up murdering people. He <laughs> is turning people to dust. <laughs> It's very weird. Mm-hmm. Speaking of dust, oh my god, oh, so much dust, <laughs> so much dust, nonstop dust. I wasn't sure what the other two uh, legions of justice people did. One one chick was just a tornado. She, she was just, just wind girl. She just blew dust everywhere oh, and had the favorite. wrong hair for that job. <laughs> Super out and ringlets yeah, and she long and cut. bushy. And then the other guy could just get huge yeah. and lay on people. Okay, so you've alluded. I can do that. You've alluded to two yeah. things now, and this is where my lack of knowledge about this comes in. However, you were talking yesterday, Adam, about uh, the thirty-seven-year-old virgin project that you and Jimmy were working on, and you know that'll never work. And now we have the forty-year-old virgin, and all we know is the forty-year-old virgin, even though you. Had the idea first, but you history, thought of White Adam, didn't history, you? History. Well, no. What I thought of is as I'm watching this, and maybe you picked up and maybe you didn't. There are so many things that are taken from other movies. That's my number one thought. I was I, like, "That's I, I, this movie. Yes, that's that movie." The, the lightning from the finger, like that's Star Wars. And when the fucking giant Adam Smasher guy, I'm like that's Ant Man, drug going through town and breaking things. Yes, there. Even if you can't put your finger on what it is, there'll just be lots of things that remind you. Of other movies. It yeah. was a compilation of other That's movie like. reminders. Now, perhaps Black Adam did it first. Maybe the comics were the first ones to have finger lightning or to have mm. giant man crashing into things. <laughs> but the point is, we've seen it. And now, mm-hmm. it was a filmmaker have to say, this has been done. Right. You have to reinvent it now. Yeah. You have to do something to pivot, do something different. Why is he called Black Adam? I thought that would that name would get more controversy than it did. Nobody knew. and then That it, was revealed in the final shot essentially yeah. the film it took place in some place that doesn't exist i think the new or maybe one of the running middle jokes eastern of, kind one of, of looking the running jokes of the film was he had a name i don't know if anyone's seen it he had a name that was like shafta adam because uh-huh. he's middle eastern well, i'm fucking it up royally but it was a name that was like germane to where he's from and they kept saying like you gotta change that name man you gotta right. change that name and That's finally it's like stuff. You know, and they I, also uh, i couldn't figure out who there was a force that had taken over the town and the city and they needed to be liberated from this force who was there to subjugate the people they were sort of south african or something it was just sort of general amalgamation of evil white guy yeah. like sure. red, military yeah, beard who spoke with a sort of aussie english accent i don't know why it was sort of whitey had come in to colonize but it wasn't it was unclear what they wanted or they <laughs> wanted the mine for the photonium or whatever the metal was which was like black panther yeah, yeah. they had a essentially metal. vibranium or whatever yes, yeah. yeah it was all sourced from other there was even the there was even a terminator 2 subplot with like the little precocious kid who kept trying to get black adam to c- take on a catchphrase oh, and i'm boy. like i've seen this this has been done are you with me in that you alluded to Iron Man. Yeah. Iron Man is very straightforward. Yes. You have Tony Stark, he's a he's a military and a madman and invest and, and a genius and he invests this thing and then he gets the suit and then he builds the thing. It's very linear. Yes. This is I had no fucking I there was an evil guy over here, then there was an evil guy over there. We're flashing back to 2000 BC and then we'd come forward to real times and then Oy. the uh, throne of elders had to be sat upon, but the crown but whoever wore the crown I, oh, the crown! I forgot about would, the crown. It would just, it would, the crown was made of vibranium, and whoever possessed the crown uh, would have all the powers I in the universe. The and then there was some group of elders from the past that were going to resurrect him or bring him to justice. Like, I don't know what that script looked like. Like, there was, I was yeah, completely dark, it's way too off. But 
have the you, average person is not going to enjoy this. But, but would you why guys, so crazy? Like, why not just kind of well that Peter type, Parker it? You know what I mean? Just kind of go. St- I know it's the trend. That's but every all these movies, the ones, the the that one. Um, uh, with, with Polka Dot Man with my friend David like oh, there's lots squad. of yeah, lots of characters lots going on that's like what people are doing right it's now it's so weirdly chaotic yeah. that you find yourself you know like I'll give you an example I, I told people like all through COVID when you're trying to make a point just go 30% of males uh, have a 50% chance of, of getting COVID. They go, 31.7% of males have a 537 yes. chance of a contracting COVID in the next five to 27 months. And I'm like, I, have, I don't know where I am. I, I don't know. I just don't know where I am. Just, just get it to round it. Get it clear. We can digest. There was so much. I didn't know if the kid was him or young him or old oh, him God. and he was put to death but then he played his dad was he the kid's dad was he reincarnated it was, they threw so much but i i couldn't imagine reading the script and go oh yeah oh no oh, oh yeah, yeah i'm like, following I, this i'm engaged there were 17 stories going on and I, and again like i like like i think we're all kind of grew up on like midnight run Mm. You know, you got this guy. <laughs> Two guys. He needs to go cross country. Yeah. He says he can't fly. It's on. Yeah. This was both high concept and not high concept enough. It's like superhero movie, but then tons of unnecessary details. Yes. Yes. A a just a confusing barrage train wreck into a <laughs> dust bunny. <laughs> dust. Dust, dust everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. It's nothing but dust, and when it couldn't get dustier, this spinning witch would fly down and dust Dust the entire town. Okay, now you have to make a choice. Gun to your head right now. Black Adam again or Passion of the Christ? Oh, I've never seen Passion of the Christ because it's But you know how it ends, right? Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what. I rewatched uh, Hateful Eight the other day huh? because it is a zero, zero in the dust o meter. No, no, and there's no dust. <laughs> None. It is the Couldn't least. Survive there. I, you know, a Black Hawk Down is great. <laughs> Too much dust. Too much dust. <laughs> he did that and uh, Django back to back. He went dust and no dust. Yeah. Yeah. He needed yeah. a break. All right. So conclusions. I know this is a very bad movie. I, if you're, I, 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 I expected like. Our friend Giovanni, who loves comic books, probably loves Black Adam and probably enjoyed the movie on a certain level. If this feeds that childhood need of like seeing this brought to life, knock yourself out. Otherwise, I wouldn't waste your time. Hooray for Bollywood! Also, when you introduce like too many words that never existed oh, before yeah. you wrote the script, right. like you know, from you go from the 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 mountain of Hamas to the the crown yes. made of theranium and the the elders and and There's the dive, di- it's like you're just sitting around going, I what which oh, one is glossary. the theranium or the titanium or the mountain yeah. or I the forgot, elders I, or it wasn't part of the movie. I forgot to mention that the guy next to me. Came alone, uh, uh, was 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 squirming in his seat in the previews. He was excited to get this going, and uh, when like the the seventh out of seven preview came on the green screen, he goes, "Ugh!" Like he was <laughs> he was impatient to get this going. It also didn't help that the last trailer that I watch was the Shazam guy with they're mm. coming out with the new. Whatever yeah. the Shazam, the Shazam is. sequel. That's so, appropriately silly. That but, band manages the tone well. It was well. fine, but just halfway into the movie when the guy had the vibranium <laughs> crown of crystals and he yelled, Shazam! I was like, oh, wait a minute. Black Adam's like, to the Batmobile! Shazam yes. was uncomfortably, sh- saying Shazam in the middle of this movie was uncomfortably cringy. Yeah. It was like, what is pile. happening? It was explained to me by some nerds, like I had to explain what <laughs> lineman dykes were yeah, to some... many, many in the, an audience of the Jay Leno crowd. Technically, I'm right, but if everyone is sitting out here befuddled and confused, mm-hmm. then maybe you shouldn't have done that. Go yeah. for a rewrite. All right. Uh, let's see. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is waiting in the wings. First, I'll tell you guys about Simply Safe, thinking about protecting your home. But waiting for the right time right now. Adam Carolla Show listeners get 40% off. Shazam! 
Best Home Security of 2022, so says U.S. News and World Report. Uh, I use these guys. I trust these guys. Easy to set up. Batteries last up to 10 years. No drilling, no pulling wires, no technicians crawling around your crawl space or up in your attic. 24-7 professional monitoring. Cost under a buck a day. Less than half the cost of ADT's professionally installed plans, by the way. Don't miss your chance to save big and protect your home. Get 40% off. That's 40% off your order. It's simply safe dot com slash Adam today. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes and set it up in about half an hour. That's simply safe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like simply safe. And now Alcoa presents definitely not a Jew on the Adam Corolla show. Dateline Chillicothe, Ohio. A 27-year-old man was charged with assault after hitting a friend in a public park with a can of Chef Boyardee beef ravioli. Definitely not a Jew. Gavin Rosdale from Bush has joined us. The Art of Survival. Is the name of the album. But definitely not a Jew. Then definitely not a Jew. And you can stream it or download it wherever you find uh, music. I'm half Jewish, by the way. Really? Uh, yeah. 1867, my family, Rosenthal, they came from Russia. Um, so I, I have a deep sense of persecution within me at all times. So <laughs> I, yeah, I came from a fleeing people and Scottish McGregor. They wow. the other half. So I'm like half a uh, Russian Jew half a uh, Scottish McGregor, like Rob Roy, Conor McGregor has a, he obviously is a McGregor, but Rob Roy, that was based on my clan. So, so either way, you're hearty stock. I'm a good wingman. Yeah. And can good. be addicted to alcohol and prescription oh, medications, yeah, nice. if you think about good it schmaltz. as well. Uh, Bush and, <laughs> well, <laughs> could, you put dad, yeah. <laughs> could you put your dad, Gavin, on, please? Or I don't know why I have his son on. I know. Oh my God, this young man. New. Yeah, what do you do? Why do you look so young? Is it the hard <laughs> Oh, man, case? I just invested. If I split the, 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 the camera around, you'd see, like, I got those, like, really vain ring lights that just helps you go out. <laughs> so, Trust me, that only <laughs> does so much. We all have those. <laughs> come around. Hey, it's your idea to do Zoom. I want to come in the studio. Last time... I've gone down the list. I'm now out of the studio. I'm on the I'm on the Zoom guy. We have to fix that. The um, so That's Bush and uh, the first album, which went uh, sixteen stone, which went uh, certified six times multi platinum. I remember it's very carved out in my world because that album came out in '94. It must have come out early ish in 94 because I hit K rock radio in about May or so of 94 and they played on Kevin and bean and K rock was wall to wall Bush. But oftentimes those songs, a Bush song would be playing while I was on hold, oh, yeah. <laughs> ready to call in and try my comedy. So I'd be very nervous, very young, trying to impress Jimmy Kimmel and Kevin and Bean. And a Bush song would be playing while I, I was waiting. That album must have dropped early 94, right? <clears throat> I'm, I, I didn't know. If, I thought it was 95, but maybe it's oh, 94. Oh, no. November, yeah. I mean, but listen, the pandemic's fucked everything up. I have no idea of time. And nothing makes any sense anymore because we like mind warp and um, it's just easier. Just be, make it simple. Everything is two years ago. Yeah. And just, That's right. Good. That's yes. Right. It's like, you know, from now on, everyone the age, under the age of six will be six. You know, good. Is that bananas thing? You know what I mean? <laughs> just like, whatever, rewrite it. You were, I mean, you, so Bush had only been together for, a couple of years before the crazy success of that album. Is that correct? Yeah. It took about two years, you know, to meet and then like maybe a year to write a whole bunch of songs and a year to get kind of, you know, to not, you know, to play pubs and clubs and not get the deal and then get the deal and then bring it all together. And, you know, that we went back to work. Um, we made that record and then we got a, uh, uh, Frank Wells from from uh, Hollywood Records was originally a distributor, right? With Hollywood Records, 
And they took that 16 stone record when we did it, we finished it. And apparently, according to uh, the head of label, uh, Trauma, they they took the record and they threw it at them and said, not only are there no singles on this record, there's no album tracks. <laughs> so so we left, we were thrown out, we were dropped from Hollywood Records. And then um, uh, uh, Ted Field from uh, Interscope. Interscope, heard yeah. It. I even believe he heard it, in, in, in fact, played on K-Rock. And he stepped in. So it was a weird, a whole weird thing. Were you at that show... And the, the, the dragonfly where the power went out three times. Uh, I had this showcase with Kara, first time ever, and the power went out. We, it was basically we found out that well, the whole band was on one plug. <laughs> so every time we get to a chorus, you know, everyone was playing too enth- 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 enthusiastically, uh, it was shut down. And three times we go back on. I remember Kevin come backstage, and I was thinking, that's it. You know, I finally got a break, but I'm just destined for for nothing because. <laughs> I can't even get a break. Like, this is the biggest break in my life. And Kevin came backstage and was like, you guys, the real deal. And I was thinking, I love this guy. He's wrong, but I love this guy. <laughs> so that, would, that would be Kevin Weatherly, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kevin Weatherly. I mean, imagine a time when a radio station was so powerful and a program director was so powerful with Kevin Weatherly that if he would play your songs... It, it would go worldwide. Yeah. He was a one imagine, one. Imagine, imagine, just a, I don't have to imagine it. I miss it every fucking day. Every time <laughs> I put out a record, they're like, you know what I mean? Trying to uh, find a place in this fragmented world, you know? Well, you uh, know, the, it's very hard. The thing that was funny about my relationship with Kevin Weatherly, he was the most powerful programmer in the world. And everybody wanted 10 seconds of his time, you know, every every a and guy sure. and every record label guy and every young fledgling band was like, could you listen to my tape? They all wanted to catch Kevin Weatherly's ear for two minutes. My relationship with Kevin Weatherly is he was going to yell at me for something I said <laughs> on the air. So I would run past his <laughs> office and he would yell at me, get back in here. And I'd have to stop and sit back. I, and then we do air checks where he'd uh. listen to stupid stuff I said on the air. So I was the only guy in America who didn't want to sit at Kevin's desk and listen to tapes with my voice on it. Everyone else was sliding them under the Dying door. To. Yes. I uh, also... I'm still trying to get his attention. I was at K-Rock last week because there's whatever, you know, a new record. He's nearly going to play the song. It's like the same dance. I'm still dancing with Kevin. <laughs> the, uh, the thing that's funny, you brought up Ted Fields from Interscope. Interscope, the guy, Ted Fields, who owned Interscope, as I've said, because I like to do a bit of car racing, that guy was huge into car racing, had Porsche 935s with his sponsorship, Interscope, all over. That's when you're a baller. You can sponsor your own car. Around today, here's how big a baller that guy is. I was at the track uh, in uh, Northern California a couple of weeks ago. I was talking to sort of an old timer. Mm -hmm. He said, that guy, Ted Fields, would go to Sonoma, race his Porsche 935 for qualifying or whatever. Then he'd hop on a private jet. He'd fly back to where he lived at some, you know, Orange County Beach City, spend the night and then get back in the plane Damn. and fly oh. back to Sonoma and do the race the following day. Just That's good eccentric, living. super rich guy who what loved a footprint. crazy what a car. Foot- yeah, <laughs> what a carbon, carbon footprint. He'd step right out of the jet and get into a car with no, ca- no catalytic converters. He's Sorry. worse than a cow. Yes, That's right. He is. He's than a hundred cows. Did you know Ted Fields? Did you? Yeah, I love him. He's a great guy. Great character. And it reminds me of sort of, um, you know, he's like a, Hurst, he's like one of those mythical figures. I went to see him a couple of years ago because, for whatever reason, um, and I went into his office and it literally was like, uh, it, it was like you know he, he's a larger than life uh, Howard Hughes esque stature and like so this massive um, uh, uh, offices on uh, on Wilshire. You know, you go in there's like one massive room with a beautiful desk in the middle of it with like a sort of a like the, the sort of secretary, the prim, amazing looking kind of perfect secretary. And then go through and there's an even bigger room with a great view. And just one desk and like, and just like a couple of chairs to sort of be grilled by him. <laughs> and, you know, 
it's really it's amazing. You know, it's, it's a good. He still lives a life. He still he still racing that Porsche. Is he? I'd, I don't I, know, but I mean, he lives like metaphorically. <laughs> metaphorically, he's definitely I, on his jet. He's definitely on his jet. That I can tell you. Oh, he should. <laughs> I didn't. I'd love to interview that guy. I he's I going to a climate change convention. <laughs> on, on his jet <laughs> with his Porsche in tow. Um, so, did you move out here like at, shortly after Bush's success uh, out to California? Or LA? No, I moved. I moved into a, a hotel and uh, living out of a suitcase, and just you know, three years straight, more or less, of just touring and clubs, and just building that uh, connection with people. That sort of is a. Uh, you know, an incredible way of doing it. And um, that's how we did it. And uh, no, I was always backwards and forwards. And um, <clears throat> I don't my family. I still have a house there. It just got flooded. Really annoying. But anyhow. Um, in I, LA, your house got no, flooded? In London, in London. No, I lived here as soon as I started having kids here. I just obviously at that point, they ruin everything. And you have to <laughs> live where they are, you know. And I don't, I don't believe in that, that, that sort of, you know, long distance parenting thing that sometimes people have to do for their own, you know, I don't have to do that. I don't want to do that. So I, I have my three boys and they live with me half the time. You know. Did, um, so you toured nonstop at the beginning. I mean, yeah, it, I pulled quite a bit right up until, I mean, I began to tour a bit less when I started to have kids, but yeah, you know, I mean, I just came back from nine weeks of America. I did Australia, uh, Europe for six weeks. I did, um, Australia for five weeks. So I put the time in this year and my kids are like, you know, no, why are you going away again? I say, when do you want to live in Reseda and you don't want any sushi ever again? <laughs> <laughs> That's the threat. Do you want to live in Reseda yeah. and, and don't have sushi? You go to Deep Valley, we're fine. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Johnny Drama that. won't go to Gavin's place. That's right. <laughs> as I've learned. Gavin was come on Loveline back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gavin's on Loveline. Yes. Yeah. Back I did. I, I've always done whatever's been asked of me with K Rock because I like it, and I've known you, everyone. I've known you all for like a long time now. Yeah, Gavin did that. Uh, I think you brought Gwen back in the day, even which must have been. Well, you guys must have been dating back then because it. When did you get married in O two? Oh. Something like that. Yeah, exactly. O two. Yeah, yeah. It was like a long time with that girl. She's got a lot of range in rockers, if you really think about <laughs> If you think, well, in musicians to marry. I mean, yeah, yeah, she's sure. married to um, Blake. Blake uh, yeah, Blake Shelton yeah. right now. And uh, I think you guys are pretty, pretty on the end, ends of the spectrum in terms Musically. of uh, male, male musicians. But uh, yeah, yeah. It was funny because I was thinking about that you know, when my kids come out on tour. And it's like some things you can't ask your kids because you want to like. You know, you wonder, because I do wonder when they kind of stand up there and play their songs and stuff like that. And then, like, I'm, like, diving into the drum kit and running through the crowd and crowd <laughs> surfing. You know, it's like, I feel pretty overdramatic when they come. Like, I'm like, am I too enthusiastic? You know what I mean? Is it weird? But uh, So that's the, <laughs> that's the only thing. I'm really committed, you know. For some reason, I love the performance of the, the kind of art of performance. You know, and I, I actually was really inspired by a lot of American bands um, early on that just had it from Hendrix to, you know, um, Jane's Addiction. I've always said it's boring. I've said it so many times. Like, you know, Perry was such a such an interesting performer that I just loved that style. You know, in England, it wasn't really about that. Uh, Sex Pistols was really wild. He based it on Richard III, you know, um, the, um, that character that uh, uh, what Olivia played, you know, all that hunch stuff. But I just like the performance of it. So when I play... It's the songs, it's being in there, but it's really like just freaking people out. I, I liken it to a bit like, uh, you know how beat dan beat boy dancers, you know, they, when they do the swivel, sure. they're just standing there, suddenly they go whoop, and they do all the swivel, and suddenly they create this uh, energy field, force field around them. It's kind of like what we try and do live in a weird way, so that it's really committed, and uh, it's very performance-based. <laughs> Do you, uh, we, we were marveling at what amazing shape you're in at the ripe old age of uh, 56, although you just missed Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's 68 and jacked. <laughs> that guy, wow. I, he may not like vaccines, but he's definitely juicing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a syringe somewhere in his life. I oh, mean, shit. 
<laughs> he's got the good Kennedy genes. Yeah. There's no doubt no about it. Doubt. But that guy's got no waist and a lot of upper the body. The Popeye forearm. He's a strong built dude, but um, Gavin's no slouch either. <laughs> do you have a regimen? Do you vegan, vegetarian, play a lot no, of I'm tennis? A lot of I'm, I'm a lot of fun. So <laughs> I, I totally try and have been trying for a long time to minimize uh, the whole meat thing because it is a bit sucky though the effect so if you eat so much meat uh it's not good for the planet so you try and minimize that but no i eat everything i love to cook so i'm loads of fun i don't have any restrictions and issues i, I i'm sure i'm really good with gluten you know, it's like everything is fine in my life so even from the russian I, jewish I side up, but i'm yeah. also i'm mindful you know what i mean it's like I'm, i would love to i love chocolate i would eat tons of it all the time but I, I sort of appreciate that maybe not eating as much as I want is that good for me. So I did notice recently I was in Australia, and I was like, fuck me. I was like, I, I felt a bit heavy. I was like drinking the beers, and I was like, <laughs> what is going on there? So I just cut back on the beer. That is a, that's, a, that's a fun one. That's so <laughs> suddenly out of nowhere, I look really well, like well-fed, stocky. I was like, I've never been like that guy. So it was a beer. You mentioned taking your kids out with you. Do your kids think you're cool? Do they, are they gone through phases? Well, where are they at right now? Um, yeah, well, we, I, you know what? I'm not, I don't have any direction about, uh, or I didn't get any sort of training about parenting. I've got loads of books. I read one line, the only line <laughs> I read in the book about parenting. It said, the babies uh, ignore the father because um, they're so connected to the mother up until nine months. And at nine months, they switch and can only be placated for a short term uh, by their father for a couple of months. And like fucking clockwork, it was like an iPhone. <laughs> it's like all my three kids, like an iPhone. Just at nine months, I became the hero. Obviously, I was around all every minute that I could all the time with them. But I just sort of facilitate ways to help uh, Gwen rest. And so I take them for walks and they like me and all that. I was their dad, but their mom. But at nine months, it's like it turns around. And uh, you become the, I don't know, it just goes to this thing where you became. So that's the only training I've, I've gotten. The rest of it is sort of pretty instinctive. And uh, I talk to them and I respect them. And like, I'm de- I really hope they don't think I'm uncool at times. Yeah. I did get out of the car. Actually, I did get out of the car yesterday to a flag football game. And as I walked over, my kid, I guess my t shirt was stuck in the top of my pants. <laughs> and my 14 year old goes, Dad, 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 you're a. Uh, I was like, oh shit, oh, I'm thinking to myself, I'm that, I'm not. now I'm that guy, I know the coffee staying dad, you know, <laughs> that, that was the only time, the rest of it, I think, I get on with them really good, I'm not that friend, you know, I don't like that sort of pally pally, but I'm really like, uh, respectful of them, and talk to them like, with respect, and I think that means that I hold on to my cool, so I think they think I'm, I'm pretty alright, you know what I mean? <laughs> But they sometimes, you know, my middle son didn't want me to take him to his girlfriend's bat mitzvah. I offered to go as his wingman. He said, oh, my God, no. So I dressed up all in the suit. I took him to the synagogue. And I went all the way up to the entrance. I don't want to just leave my son at the entrance, you know. So it's like, let me just go in. I'm, I'm, I'm your security. You know, I'll walk two feet behind you. You're know, two feet in front. Of fucking kids. And we're going inside. And the mothers are going a couple of miles on the way up and they're all dressed and this is the synagogue they're like, oh come in there's plenty of room come and join us you oh, must yeah. join us Gavin Rostov shows up at your crushed. synagogue I could tell my, my, yeah, my son was crushed he did not want me anywhere near that so I was like no no, no just driving I'll be back at you know the, the 11 15 pick up or whatever it was 12 o'clock pick up <laughs> at the holiday in in, in Ventura you know just off Ventura I had a I had a I had a I had a yeah, I've been there. I've been um, about anyway, everywhere. Uh, so, so I, most of the time, but apart from those twins, and interestingly, it's the same kid. So oh. he's the one that the a, most. Is- I had a sad realization <laughs> actually when I was walking out to the car this morning because when I pulled up into the garage last night, my 16 year old son was attempting to put air in his hey, bike tire. There we go. Ele- electric bike, That's but bike win. nonetheless. Hey. He had figured out a way to plug in my little compressor. He had the hose out and he was going to do it. And, and I, part of me stopped as a sort of old mechanic guy and was going to give him the get out of the way. Let me handle this. And then I thought, no, you, you, you go at it. You should go at it. Let's see how this looks. And then at a certain point, I went back upstairs. I went in the house. 
couple hours went by and I called him and I said, are you still wrestling with the bike tire? And he said, no, I, I rode the bike to the Y. And I said, you filled up the bike tires. He said, filled up the bike tires okay. and went to the Y. And then I was walking down to the car this morning and I thought, son of a gun, uh, put some air in those bike tires. Not too shabby. And then I thought, wait, he's fucking 16 and a half. I know. People How are impressed are you? Storming the beach at Normandy. <laughs> I was taking bikes apart, like rebuilding small block Chevy engines. Like I was so over the moon. That he'd manage a way to get air yeah. into the tire of a bicycle. And I looked at that as such a major thrilling Side victory as a as a blue collar, ex blue collar <laughs> dad. And then I thought, man, have we lowered the bar? Oh yeah. Putting air in a bike tire is something I mastered at seven. And I was oh, I liked it, but I realized I, I built it up too much. I have that age, so it's it's hilarious the things. Um we go out for school in the morning and so they're having their breakfast. I made a couple of burritos and they're waiting for them. And, uh, and then I made him some sandwiches for lunch. And I put them by drinks and some fruit in the door, in the, in the hallway. And one of them stepped over it, took the burrito, but stepped over the, took his water, the fruit, but stepped over his sandwich. <laughs> but stepped, left the burrito. And I was like, and the car's like, do you want the burrito? Is that was for me? I was like, it's with all your stuff. What do you mean? Like, what am I going to do? Put it in your face. <laughs> oh, my God. So it just get pretty funny. I, I'm hoping this is true. Bad podcast. I, I am hoping this is true because it's one of my favorite songwriters and lyricists as well. I, I hear you may have a quite an affinity for Leonard Cohen. Is mm -hmm. that true? Yeah. I'm wondering what your favorite song is because I, I feel like he's lost in when we have these conversations about like great lyricists and great songwriters. I love Leonard Cohen. We never talk about him. Hmm. Um, Chelsea Hotel was the first thing that came to mind. Same. Well, I need to hear some with Leonard Cohen oh. songs. Ugly, we have the music, you know. Yeah, Chelsea Hotel and Famous Blue Raincoat are, have been stuck in my head for 20 years. Just always. He's an incredible man, you know. Um, yeah, what a great poet. I'm so glad to hear that. We and a great lyricist. And a melodicist, you know, he's like underrated, I think, in terms of his gentle kind of melody. Yes. They're really, really beautiful. Is he Broadway? <laughs> No, no, no. He's hallelujah. Oh, he's hallelujah. hallelujah. There's, a, there's a documentary coming out about that song. Not him, not his career, that song. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's coming out like a month. Well, because it went through a real journey, that yeah. song. He got, I, I think he got dropped by his label because he wrote that song, that kind of thing. You know? Labels have a lot of insight. <laughs> Maybe I'm just thinking Leonard Cohen because it's, it's... Cohen? It's, Leonard Bernstein. Uh, Cohen Bernstein, yeah. sorry. It's a bit, you know, it's... it's, it's this morning, uh, it's pretty morning, but it's you know, but but it's beautiful I and mean, hypnotic. You know, he's like, um, it sort of has a quality of like he, he's a precursor to Nick Cave or something. Mm. You know, that same register. He's like a, you know Tom Waits without the gruff. Yes, it's that register, that feel. Is he alive? I don't know. Passed away. No. Died in 2016. Oh. So what was the story of the song? The guy who sung Hallelujah died, right? Yeah, Jeff Buckley made it even Jeff more Buckley, famous. Yeah, yeah. Drowned, yeah. Drowned oh. swimming di or diving yeah. something? Yeah, like drowned somehow. You know, oh. of, of all things, many years ago when I was doing Dancing with the Stars and got a little FaceTime with Priscilla Presley... <laughs> She was explaining to me that she wanted to make a documentary about that song. Wow. Maybe this is mm. it. That was, you it's know, 10 out. plus years ago, but I don't know if that's if she's behind this this doc that's mm. coming out about that wow. about that song. TV takes time. I've been trying to do a, a my own show for a, for a, for a while, for a few years now, but I think it's um TV is really hard to break into. It's really hard. What show do you want to do? Like a fortress. Uh, I, I did this show called Eat with Gavin Rostow, and uh, I just shot two episodes, two two pilots. It's like an interview show, exactly like basically comedians in cars getting coffee. But, yeah, it's different in that I just bring people around. I have dinner, make people dinner, have drinks, shoot it, and like take juicy bits, funny bits, interesting insights. You know, that sounds like. awesome. No, no difference like sort of an active podcast. It's an active podcast. Unless you're the guest, then you just sit there and uh, eat and stuff. Let me, guess, me what... let me guess some producers want it to be more Real Housewives-y, like who's going to flip your table over? Who's going to throw a chair through the window? No, 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 nothing like that at all. No, oh, no, good. No, no, no. I mean, I'm, gonna have, I'm going for like, you know, 
you know, I just want like amazing celebrities that we're interested in and we we know, but yeah, we don't really know at all. And, yeah. And, and make an attempt through a dinner as opposed to a sort of specific interview slot. So, you know, like yeah. a dinner, like come at six o'clock and, you know, and, and the whole thing is set to um, uh, the kind of schedule of like real time, you know, like the, the dinner. So that's well, it. I shot that. two episodes already. I shot two of them already and um, and I've been waiting. It's taken a couple of years. I shot them so long ago that my hair was a little short and I was, guess either me or my hairdresser going through a crazy midlife crisis. I had like, <laughs> I like a bit of a blonde streak here, blonde streak on the back of my head. It's like, it was like, it was funny. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I was just like, let's have a laugh. I did a TV show in England, uh, The Voice, and I was like, fuck it. You know, what am I going to do? How am I going to, you know, and my guy's like, yeah, let's do this, let's do that. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I look like a weird zebra, but it's cool. Did, uh, so I don't know how to integrate those two episodes because now I've got, you know, just regular. I, I, I want to circle back to cooking, but I do want to say this because it popped in my head. And um, don't don't be too modest here. Um, what celebrity, because you're going to have to have celebrities come over and you're going to cook for them. What celebrity is a huge Bush fan? Because I was just watching TMZ the other day and found out that Serena Williams, for instance, is a huge Green Day fan. Hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm surprised. But on the other hand, it's got to be cool for Green Day sure. when you find out that Serena Williams is a massive fan. That's cool. And it happens every once in a while when you're a celebrity you think in terms of your fans, but you don't ever think in terms of another celebrity right. being a huge fan of yours. So Bush throughout the years, for sure, must have had some celebs or presidential nominees or politicians or whomever that were big Bush fans. Yeah, well, I did have... Um the judge at my jury service excused jury number 154, who was me, uh, and thanked me for the record that got him through his college years. Damn. <laughs> if, if it's not good for anything else, it's good to get out of jury duty. <laughs> it was, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a yeah. fucking guy who was suing Santa Monica uh, City because he had climbed over the gate uh, at one in the morning, wasted and fallen and broken his ankle. So he wanted a million dollars. That's like the Curb Your Enthusiasm <laughs> That sounds episode, so right? Santa Monica to me. <laughs> yeah. uh, Brilliant. The documentary yeah. is called Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen, A Journey, A Song, and it's already out. You can rent it. It's streaming on many platforms. Not produced, at least according to IMDb, by uh, Priscilla Presley. Hmm. That, yeah. was, no, that was a non sequitur. The <laughs> sermon of the story was going so well, but go on, tell us. Oh. Oh, great. And in we're, the we're documentary, watching. they talk about the Santa. No, they literally. That's that's a. That's was that the season finale of the Curb Your Enthusiasm season that year? Uh, that yeah, the, the, the robber yeah. went over the fence in the pool. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, cool. right. Well, no, there was yeah, no yeah. fence. Oh, and dates, right. Right. And he dates Drake. Dates uh, Tracy Ullman just to get the. That's <laughs> right. The right. city council <laughs> woman. <laughs> Just hey, I'm, I'm telling you, if you've ever tried to pull a permit or de dealt with the city, especially the city of Santa Monica, uh, you will uh, take a bullet <laughs> with a heavy set city council member. Those kind of thoughts will go through your head about month 17 of you not getting whatever it is you're yeah. trying to get. I swear yeah, to God. I handle, handle on my gate to walk in my house 17 months later. Oh, my God. Did... So, uh, so, but, but other so, yeah, than the judge, know, other than the years. judge, Brad Pitt, he loves Bush. Brad Pitt. That's a yeah. good there answer. Go. There and there's go. no way for us to verify. So it's a great <laughs> answer. Thank you so much. And I was going to say Chris Martin also, you know. Oh, that's good. No yeah. Fellow, fellow musician. Well, it's well. not fair because he's like a fellow Brit, but I'm just, I just, I could say anyone I want because you don't know how to ring him up and ask him. No, there's literally true. no way. True. Yeah, you got to keep going. Yeah. If you got down to like John Hyatt like or Graham <laughs> yeah. Parker, I might be able to follow that up. That, right. that you could ask John be, Popper. I could or John Popper. I could probably authenticate that, but I do not have Brad Pitt's phone number. <laughs> oh, by the way, John Popper's going to be on tomorrow. All right. Oh shit. Hey, Gavin, you want to hang with us and do a little bit of news? Sure. What do you got? Uh, we we'll got tell a you quick, one second. We got a quick spot, and then uh, we'll do. Uh, We'll do some news, and you can just chime in. 
Tell us what you think. Stamps.com. Holidays have a way of sneaking up on us, especially for a small business. Get prepared. Get Stamps.com. The 24-7 post office you can access anywhere. I've used Stamps.com for 12-plus years here to ship merch, books, paperwork, plus exclusive discounts like 86% off UPS rates. Rates are constantly changing with Stamps.com's switch and save feature. You can compare carriers and rates and get the best deal every time. Sign up with the promo code ADAM for a special offer, including a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale, which we have here. It goes up to about 80 pounds, I think. No long-term commitments, no contracts. Stamps.com is where you're going, what we've always used. Click the microphone at the top of the homepage and enter Adam at Stamps.com and get all of those savings. All right, quick break. Back with Gavin Rosdale in the news right after this. We're looking at a picture of Gavin and me and Dr. Drew. Must have been Loveline. Must have been... 97. 1997. 25 wow. years ago. It's hard to pick which one's the best looking. Yeah, that was a, a real murderous coin toss. row yeah. of, of lady killer. <laughs> Are they used to call guys who loved women lady killers? Lady killers? Right. I think that's out of vogue now. Yeah, <laughs> it's not great. Especially with the true <laughs> crime genre. We got rid of lady killer. That guy's a lady killer. And the other guy's a coxman. <laughs> <laughs> we got rid of both those terms. Yeah, it's for the best. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, remember the guy who slammed his SUV into the Christmas parade in Wisconsin? Yes. Yeah, he's been found very, very guilty. Um, he uh, he was the one in Waukesha. I'm sorry, in uh, yeah near Mil near uh, Milwaukee in Waukesha. Um, he has been found guilty of first degree intentional homicide during that attack in November 2021 that killed six people, injured 48 others, and remember he represented himself. He was found mentally competent enough to be his own uh, attorney, which I don't think went super well. He uh, he would clash with the judge over disruptive behavior throughout the three week trial. He took off his shirt at one point. He'd scream at the well, judge. Well, he made a fort out of boxes. Sure, and hid. Is that true? Yeah, I believe the, it. the legal boxes. Yeah, yeah. He went he full sort himself? of igloo style. And built himself like a fort and, 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 and was able to shield himself from the judge. Totally competent. Yeah. So he, uh, oh, he would accuse the uh, prosecutors of being slick with evidence. Like it was, a, that was a legal term. Um, the judge threatened several times to have him removed from the court. He'd mutter stuff under his breath. So each homicide count carries a mandatory life how sentence. Big a, when you're heading to prison for seven life sentences, yeah. how big a threat is, I'm going to make you leave this court? Yes, and what do you do then as the court? Like, there's no there's no attorney, there's no, no. Uh, defendant. Yeah. You control your client. Yeah. You, you, yeah. He's gone. The, yeah. the trial's over. Yeah. So he's, he. I mean, the, the takeaway is he's never getting out of prison. Multiple life sentences and, and uh, reckless endangerment and all sorts of things. Yeah, I wonder if they charge him for a hate crime. Oh, you weren't lying about the little igloo campground. He yeah, made. he built a he built a fort to hide Good from the from the judge, all the boxes, which I would like to do at many dinners I've had with my family. Yeah, but I just realized it'd be in poor taste. Right. But emotionally, I was building a fort sure. to try sure. to protect myself, draw more attention. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have any boxes because they didn't have any stuff. True. <laughs> That's right. Gee, yeah, come on, he'd well, bring his own. I know, that's true. B BYOB. Yeah, bring my own box. Yeah. Um, and just to keep things a little uh, a little maudlin for a moment, the details have emerged about Monday morning's deadly shooting at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School. That's the one in St. Louis. Mm. Um Police said the suspect killed two people, a teacher, a student, was later killed by the police. The shooter identified as a 19-year-old black male, again, not saying his name, but um, he graduated from the school the year before, did not have a criminal history, nor a significant presence on social media. He brought an AR-15-style rifle, 600 rounds. Here's what they found. It's Poli kind of, you know, it's always interesting. I like to take uh, uh, racial angles at everything, Gavin. But... Um, the Waukesha guy, black guy killing a bunch of white people, didn't get a ton of press. And I heard about this school shooting. I just heard sort of 
at peripheral. There was a school shooting, and I was like, oh, here we go. We're going to have all the town halls and all the usual suspects. And then I thought to myself a day or so ago, like, there's a school shooting. How come we're not mm. hearing the, more about it? Because he had an AR-15 and he was yeah. black, and that's there's a narrative, and it didn't really fit very well. So we, it gets reported. We just don't have our town Do halls right. about it. Well, right. he th- they found a note, and that doesn't often happen. Though sometimes there's you know symbolic whatever Nazi symbol or whatever. Not with this guy. He said apparently in the note. I don't have any friends. I don't have any family. I never had a girlfriend. I never had a social life. I've been an isolated loner my entire life. This was the perfect storm for a mass shooting. I could have wrote that note wrote that? minus yeah. the mass shooting part <laughs> when I was 19. Sure. That's I good wasn't point. I wasn't I mean Gavin, you were you painted dentist office, I heard as a career at some point. Yeah, I just was a painter decorator, you know, to make money. I was specifically clear that I never did a job where I could be of any particular use. Smart. You know, to anyone. So they'd entice me to stay, pay me more. You know what I mean? It's like, it was like I worked for a guy who actually um, I grew up with. And I worked for him. And then as soon as I made money and sold a record off, shortly after we met, um, he painted the house I got and he's worked for me forever since. And he's kind of like, Put set up the Zoom for me, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> That's Life amazing. is weird, but yeah, I mean, I think the one 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 tragedy <clears throat> consequence of all these shootings is that people get inured to it. Yes, yeah. It's like two and a half thousand. It's two and a half thousand shootings far, so far this year. That's what I read. Two and a half thousand. This is like well, how you, it's hard to know where to put all the the uh, shock and horror. Yeah, yeah, it's true. All right. Well, give us a happy story. Okay. Let's do that. Um, Oh, so apparently all you people hate the middle seat. I would much rather have the middle seat on a plane than a window seat, but I know I'm very much in the, in the minority on that. Yeah. I know. I don't like sitting next to the window. I know. Yeah. I want the aisle. You're the minority. You're the lonely one. Well, you're the lonely one. It's, it's yeah. funny you should say that because, so apparently nobody wants the seat. A recent poll proves it with 0.6 of 7,500 voters choosing that seat. But the way it was filled out, apparently a lot of those look like they were punched by accident. Yeah. So truly, yeah, nobody wants know. it. So why do you, I ask? Why do you, why do you like it so much? I don't want to be stuck against the window for two reasons. I need to be able to know I can get up freely, and also everyone knows if I fall asleep next to the window, that side of the plane will fall out. And what about yeah, the aisle? Bit, though <laughs> I need the aisle, but I'll take the what middle the instead. Oh, reason, what was the first bit you wore? I just want to be able it? to get up. I get. Yeah. Uh, you can do that in any seat. No? Uh-huh. Easier. I don't. I am very polite. I have a lot of uh, personal shame. I'm from the Midwest. All these reasons. I can't wake a sleeping stranger and ask them to move so I can get up. I just need to be, you know, left to my own devices. A- oh, I, but you want to try it? Because I live on planes a lot of the time. I'm mainly on the buses, but. Some of the hilarious crab like moves you have oh, to do. Yeah. yeah. Hold one leg steady, <laughs> just raise the next one and hold the seat in front. <laughs> yes. And just swear full of them. You just pray they don't wake up just that time when you're straddling them. I don't yeah. have that move. It's. I'll lift the other leg. It's but like Fight it's Club, ask your I, I would <laughs> ask you what is ruder? Is it me waking you up so that I can get around you, or is it me trying the. <laughs> Mr. Rubber Band move, Roundhouse. and then you wake up and my balls are in your drink <laughs> as I'm trying to yeah, you, straddle you. Point. It's a it's a it's a tie rope. There's no balls in the drink. That's right, what I'm right. And it depends whose balls. balls. Right, but, but before they, it, yeah, you're clear. You know, but before they right. sleep, that's why I sit down and I go, look, while we're taxing, I'm going to give you an option. I can either <laughs> jostle you and wake you, or I can dip my balls. <laughs> In your tea. Let me know what you'd like. Whatever, however Fall you want to play court. it, I'll, I'll do it that yeah. way. If you're playing, I on think the takeaway from this conversation is you have low hanging balls. That's yes. true. <laughs> that That's is. exactly right. The the there was a big story about two weeks ago about the woman who was sitting in between the two 
tub of lards and the and she was tweeting about she it she was or tweeting texting. about it yeah. and then everyone turned on her oh, yeah. what's she saying I, what's we, she saying it's brilliant uh, she we'll have it right for tomorrow if the guys don't pull it up I'm the filly what's yeah she, she was like you know saying like I'm trapped between these two blah 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 blah, blah. but they could see it nice. and now she went viral being an asshole and I'll have oh. that for tomorrow if they don't pull it up but yeah. let me let me. but the good news is everyone attacked her and she just clapped back at everyone oh too, yeah because oh she did not apologize. Good for her. Yeah, well, great. you've got look. If if there are two morbidly obese people that are bookending you, and you become the burger in their <laughs> bun, I mean that's that's kind of it's kind of on the airline. You got to buy the seat some next to like you. That. By the way, you know, watch out because some people would enjoy that. That's Gina. true. True. I would. Well, here's what Virgin Australia is doing about this middle seat situation. They're going to make it more enticing. They've launched this middle seat lottery, and it's only open to people who sit in that seat during the flight. So from now until next April, the end of April, any velocity frequent flyer member, 18 or older, who sits in the middle seat can get on the app and enroll in the lottery, and they got all kinds of prizes. They have full day helicopter pub crawls, two night vacations including flights, bungee jumping, Australian yeah. Football League tickets, just trying to get people to finally take up that it's seat. It's a good idea. Because it really, nobody wants that seat. No, I'll, <laughs> they I'll, can do anything they want, nobody wants it. I'll take it, Everyone's I'll win like, all the oh, prizes. Oh, oh. Everyone's like, oh, fuck the middle seat. You know what <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's uh, obviously if you're flying with somebody. The, you know what, you know, let me, let me give you, some. Gavin, you probably have this. If you're going to fly and you're going to fly like Southwest or coach or some, some version of that, it is very important for you to fly with somebody who's an underling to you. Mm -hmm. So you, I fly with a guy named Mike August everywhere <laughs> and I always force him to take the middle seat. Oh, middle seat, Mike. Middle seat Mike, when I then go to the window of the aisle, it's important. That guy has to work for you. Like, you could fly with a lot of people, but you can't fly with Brad Pitt. Not on Southwest. Right. Because As they often do. I'm he's sure. going to trump you, and you're going to have to take the middle seat. Although he's a huge fan. <laughs> hmm. He's tough. Rock, paper, scissors now. But Hot I'm saying, paper, as long as you have some tour manager or somebody, some roadie, or somebody who's also getting on that Southwest flight, you get them to take the Dumbo seat. No, I get every. I go everywhere. I have a female tour manager, amazing uh, Yvette, and uh, she's been with us like 10, 11 years. And so she always takes care of that stuff. We're always fine. But um, <clears throat> generally, I haven't been on many three seaters for a minute. We flew a lot all around Australia, actually, oh. in those seats. Um, and they, we didn't fly fast. We just flew regular economy. The flights were just about two hours, it didn't matter. But um, yeah, still. Those middle seats. It's so great. How about the, how great is it when you have the uh, window and nobody sits in the middle? How great is that? They should they should do a sort of some kind of reverse lottery for that. Right. It's funny though because it's like it's all kind of relative because you, you especially if you get on that Southwest flight and there's nobody in that middle seat. Or God forbid, you get the whole row. Oh, and you, get to put the, class. you get to put the armrest yeah. up and stretch out. But let's just convert that to. Uh, on land like like if i just took a folding chair and slid it next to the window of my house and said you can sit here alone for six hours isn't this awesome i'd be like i'm gonna kill myself i would kill myself yeah. so it doesn't really apply on the ground if you, with a tiny bag of peanuts sweet in the folding deal? chair with the padded seat yeah and i'll hand you some fiesta mix yeah. and a little mylar pack a little diet coke. and a diet coke and you can sit against the window for four and a half hours not interested not interested. Not a full diet coke. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you create your own world. You know? uh, yeah. Just get that window when you're just away from everyone. You just turn away. And I'm, I don't know what you guys are like. I mean, Adam's probably the same as me. Like, super kind of unfriendly. I mean, not really impolite, <laughs> but like, it's like a don't want chatty, chatty guests, you know, chatty, chatty people and all that stuff. Same. So I have used the body language when you have the window seat. You can just arch way around. It's just obvious. You've got headphones on. Your body language is closed all the way. You've got a tiny little slice of the plane. <laughs> That's what I do at home. I'll take the folding <laughs> chair and I'll angle it a little bit toward the bay window. 
<laughs> All right, let's bring it home, Gina Glad. You Go got ahead. it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, let's give a plug out to Gavin Rosdale. Uh, the Art of Survival. That's the latest Bush album, and you can find it wherever you listen to uh, wherever you listen to finer music. You can download it and stream it and check it out. And also, if you want live dates, go to bushofficial.com. That's bushofficial.com. Uh, also, nice. uh, yes. We've only got two shows left of, of, of the, that are booked. Otherwise, I'm unemployed. Oh. After this interview and those two shows, I'm unemployed. So, How fun. Yeah, New Year's Eve in Vegas, New Year's Eve. <laughs> well, when Brad Pitt drops out for the cooking show, yeah. you got my number. I'm happy to come over and eat your vittles. I know that sounded gay. Uh, the Real Anthony Fauci is the name of the movie. It's also the name of the book by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And I'm going to be in Vegas at Wise Guys Comedy Club coming up November 2nd. We're doing a podcast there. Carrot Top and Josh Wolf up on stage nice. for that. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Gavin Rosdale and Gina Grad and Walt Ryan. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.